Welcome back, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about a company that ARK Invest owns 21% of. I've seen this company going around a lot. A lot of people are talking about it. They IPO'd on Friday. They were up 145%. Is this company a buy, a 5x opportunity, or is it a ticking time bomb? I'm going to dive into the details. I read the SEC filings. I looked at the balance sheet. I, lo I looked at everything in this company. This was so hard to understand and wrap my head around all this medical terminology. This one was a very difficult one for me to do. So I hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to this channel because I just spent the last six hours researching this one to bring this information to you guys. And what I found might surprise some of you, but it might not. Maybe you guys know this stuff, but here it is. The company is 908 Devices, ticker symbol M-A-S-S. Is this a 5x opportunity or a risky ticking time bomb? Let me dive into it. Basically, this company has three main products. This is their money bag right here. It's the MX908. What it does is it can detect chemical, explosive, and, and drugs. Um, it, it can detect things that your eyes can't see. But basically, in order to do this type of work, you would need a big team and a lot of resources. But with this device, a government agency could go into a building and detect these these harmful chemicals or find these drugs or whatever they need it for with a portable device um they have these devices in all 50 states and in 30 different countries and um this one's the money bag they also have the rebel and i think this is the reason why arc is heavily not i think this is why they own 21 percent of the company the rebel basically a cell it's a cell and genome therapy device it does these tests now i am not a bioscientist by any means however from what i picked up on this or what i could gather is that when you do this certain kind of testings with the cells and genomes it would take it costs a lot of money and it takes a lot of time you would need to take these samples and send them out to different labs and then each time they do a test on the in these different labs it changes a variable if you take it out and you put it into here you're it there's slight little tiny changes however it could really it it, it makes things inconsistent and and not to mention it takes a lot of time it could take two to four weeks or whatever so this device reduces it to seven minutes and it, it removes all those variables that can mess things up um and it's a lot smaller device you can move this thing around so the zip chip is it's a lot bigger of a device this one was way over my head i don't understand anything about it except that it takes bio samples and it runs tests on this now this one they don't push this one as much their sales on this isn't as high as their portable devices However, this one is important when it comes to some of the things I'll talk about. So the pros, what could go right? And if it does go right, I think it could 5x if it executes on all these things. Um, so the intense growth, they would need bigger growth than what they've had. I'm talking intense growth. They would need exponential growth. Um, and if that goes right... Expand our customer-driven pipeline of new point-of-need applications. I copied these things from the SEC filing. So when I say expand our, I am not involved with the company. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. These are just out of their filings. So what this one means is basically like Tesla. If you think about Tesla driving around, collecting all this data on their, their customers that drive, they can then use the, that data. They have like 250 billion um driving hours of data or miles driven of data that they put in and then their AI system and algorithm and their all their network can communicate with each other for um, self-driving cars. So how this works, why I'm relating it to Tesla is that they can take these samples like this doctor over here, this hospital can take this cell and genome sample and then run it. And then it gets put into the system, right? So you see where I'm going with it. 
then this doctor does it, and then they get all these samples from everybody, and it goes into one database that has all these different test results. So when one comes up like test A over here, it turns up like test X over here, they can make the 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 data and the algorithm and the, the database can come up with decisions a lot better. That that's actually huge right there is the data and the essays. And they've done this a couple times already with their customers that already use it. Um, a possible buyout from a co from a competitor. If someone gets into the space or someone else sees how much this company is growing or could use parts of their assets or um, even some of their um, people on their team or whatever, they could be bought out. Maybe that would make the stock 5x. I don't like buying things on buyout rumors, but th to me, this company is ripe for a buyout. But anyway, a continued focus on simplicity, speed, convenience, and cost increase measurement consumption so that basically means and this is a huge one for, this is another one i like a lot is they make things easy so they're focused on improving things with tech and making things easier so if you look at apple or amazon or or even tesla what what do, what do these companies do they like to solve problems and make them easier this company is solving a problem and they're making it easier um, portable a big network lots of data um so that's what i like is is they're looking to make improvements in people's lives making a process easier and making it making things easy um continue to get government contracts and funding maybe they can start lobbying the government get favorable contracts and that could be good for them too so when i made the cons list I thought it was going to be a little five-point system like this here. One little page. But I had to add four pages. This, this is the problem with this company. So the cons. Things that could go wrong, and I think if they do go wrong, um, they could go down to 5 to $8. That's, that's just my guess. Um, if all these things happen. So limited sales experience. Right now they don't have a big sales team. They're going to use a lot of the money to to build a sales team and to get better with sales um, but right now it, it's very limited limited sales experience um, inability to manage the current growth so if their growth rate slows down that could hurt them retain key personnel if a comp if a competitor wants to some of their employees offers them more money or they get fed up with the company and they quit that could hurt them big time too Intense and growing competition, kind of like in the in the pros, uh, they're ripe for a buyout. It could also hurt them if a competitor beats them, basically. If they get beat out by the competition. Here's a huge one, insider control and selling. So I'll get into those numbers. And here's another one. As of September 30th, 2020, our accumulated deficit was $68.2 million. That means they don't make any money yet. They're not profitable. And it, they have yet to have a profitable quarter. So this company does not make money. This is a growth company. And another con is that they they are in their filings. They're recognized as a growth company. So they don't have to report certain things that normal companies do. They don't need to report certain payment arrangements with the board or with with the ceo or golden parachutes or a lot of those things that most companies would need to report and certain financials and um, accounting things they don't need to because they're considered a growth company um so right out of right on their filing it says we anticipate that we will seek additional capital through a combination of public and private equity offerings, debt financing, strategic partnerships, and alliance and licensing arrangements in the future to fund our operations. We, and indirectly our stockholders, that'd be me and you, will bear the cost of issuing and servicing such securities. So right here, we anticipate that we will seek additional capital. So right there, they're already saying we're going we're gonna to raise money again at some point. We're going to issue more stock. Um, the dilution of the stock. So a significant portion of our total outstanding shares may be sold into the public 
market in the near future, which could cause the market price of our common stock to drop significantly, even if our business is doing well. So, for example, right now, they just issued with their IPO 6,500,000 shares at $20 each, right? And then the second they opened, they popped to $45. So they issued the 6.5 million. However, insiders already own 19,700,762 shares. So insiders already own 75.2% of this company. Now, the date available for sale to the public for after this first lockout period um, is the 90 days. 76,000 shares can get sold after 90 days. And then after 180 days, 19,624,762,000 shares will can get sold after 180 days. So all those insiders will, will be able to sell their shares. Um, and not to mention there's more dilution with there's 154,000 shares. Um, someone owns an option at $7.92 and then someone else owns an option to purchase 3,264,000 shares at $1.79. Okay. So these people here, these nine. These guys that own 19,700,000 shares, they purchased this stock around a dollar, $1 to $8 is what they spent. And now the stock is worth, you know, $45. And they're getting rewarded for being early investors. However, I do see share dilution coming because those are going to, they're going to exercise those. There's an extra 1 million shares that from the IPO date that they can purchase at twenty dollars each so that's another million that's three million so that's four point two so that's four point around four and a half million more shares of dilution um and i think that's a problem and it's just the the amount of um looking at the filing i mean yes arc in arc owns 21% of this company and that's enough to to get me to believe in this company um it's just with the growth rate let's see if I can find their um their balance sheet they're you know going from 13 to 18 million that that's good in revenue but they're not profitable yet they're still operating at a loss for one which I, I understand we could look at it as if we're early investors and we're trying to get in on this thing, you know, before the big move. I, I could see it. I could look at it through that lens. Um, however, it's just, to me, this one is too risky. It, it's, who knows, maybe this thing will go crazy, especially because ARC is in it. And the, the ARC alone, having the stamp of ARC backing your company is is huge in itself it's just with the amount of debt that they have or not debt, the amount of cost of their company and how they're they're not profitable yet um the amount of shares out there that that will dilute the shares that are already out there the amount of insider control it's just to me, it's it's a very risky play. Now, if if everything works out and they they get to those points and they, their growth just keeps going crazy and they're able to do it, which they are, they there is a path of profitability and there is a path of success for this company. It's just I don't see the risk to reward ratio as at what it's at right now. I don't see it as um, something I'd be willing to do. Not only be, one because of all that, but two, the main reason for me is because I. This one's over my this this is not my type of company that I understand easy. Um, if you guys are into to biosciences and it's just hard for me to wrap my head around and understand the company enough to be willing to take a risk on on something like that but um to me it, it's just a little bit too risky and i'm gonna stay out of this one out of mass i might be kicking myself because it, it, it could go crazy 
Um, if I were to get in this position though, I I would literally not go more than one percent. So if you have a thirty thousand dollar account, I wouldn't spend more than three hundred dollars invested in this company. Honestly, even one percent, like maybe a half a percent, is the most I would I would be willing to put into this. Um, but basically, those are my thoughts. I did a lot of research on this and I, I would like to believe like, oh, this is a great the IPO. You're one of the first ones in. It could double up, triple up, quadruple up. I just I would like to wait after the 180 days after the lockout period. I would like to see if those insiders start dumping their shares or getting rid of some of them. Um, so I'm going to wait on this one. I'll wait after that. And then I would I would like to hear their earnings too, because the the research I had to do it was very hard to find. Um, I would I want to hear them on in their earnings calls, and I want to see how this thing plays out before I dive into it. And when I do dive into it, I will let you guys know. I'll put out an alert, and I'll, I'll make a video on it or whatever. But for me, I'm out of this one. I made a video about the um, United Wholesale merger. That one I'm totally in favor of, but this one I got to stay out of. So like the video, subscribe to the channel. I hope this provided value to you guys. It's very interesting learning about this company and the different things they're in. It's just a little bit over my head so and a little bit too risky for me. So I'm out of this one. So I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.